London Fashion Week, sponsored by Max Factor. My name's Anna Fraser. People tend to like being in London. It's quite a relaxed city compared to the, you know, really southern French or the kind of really aggressive, like chain-smoking Italians. It's really, it's an amazing industry to work in. And as a young person, you can be really independent financially, and also, you know, you, you just are travelling all around the world on your own. And I say on your own, but basically away from your family. And, you know, that's really an amazing freedom. That's an amazing thing to be able to do. So I suddenly saw it for that and thought that that was, you know, it's really worthwhile. So we're backstage at Baradi, Antonio Baradi's show. Um, it's the first kind of really big one of London Fashion Week. And um, there's a lot of noise, a lot of champagne. And we've got about an hour before the show. I'm just changing my hairstyle from the show before. And... Um, I'm getting a huge, I think everybody's getting black hair, and then I'm getting a huge hair piece. It's going to be extend, it's going to be suspended from my head. So I was 18 when I left school, so I was probably like 19 when I was getting into it. Now I'm 23. I now know what I'm really interested in, whereas when I left school I, I really wasn't sure, I had no idea. Modeling has shown me something, given me a direction. I think it just builds up, you know, a certain confidence. I think it can be very destructive too, as caught in terms of confidence. But I think that in my case, you know, it's been really great. Is there any new back here? <laughs> oh, no. Just before I leave, I always think I'm about to go to the new, always without fail. And, and actually, it's something that a lot of models have. And, um, we just we're, we just all go like this, just you know, holding ourselves before we go. On. There are a lot of cameras around and. So the hype is built up and the energy is built up, as it is at the other side of the stage too, um, by the waiting and by the, you know, by the, the atmosphere and by the energy and stuff. And um, so by the time you go on, you're al it's almost a relief, and especially as when you know, when you've taken that first step and you've forgotten that you need to go through, that's, that's a relief when it turns from nerves into really, you know, a really great feeling. It's such a shame that it's only a three second kind of, you know, moment, but it's, it's an amazing buzz being in front of that many people. If you if you're that way kind of you like it, then it's a really big, it's a real high you can get. I, I don't think anything's going through my mind except that I'm just totally empowered. <laughs> you know, it's the most powerful. It's a really powerful feeling because you're, you're basically you're slightly in control of the audience. Okay, they're good. You know, they're just. I know that they're not going to jump on stage and you know, push me off or whatever. So. Nothing can really go wrong. Each model, if they're inspired by this, if they're into that whole thing, they do create a style for themselves, and I certainly have, apparently. And it's it's like a horse, apparently, which isn't which doesn't sound so nice. The horse because I lift up my knees. It's quite it's quite arrogant. I think I have my nerves in the air a little bit, and you know, I kind of look down on people. <laughs> so this is it. We're at the heart of it all. This is where London Fashion Week happens. Um, it's the Natural History Museum. It's the venue for all the um, on-site shows. Um, here's one of them. These are all the people waiting for the next show. I'm not sure what it is. Your pass, please. Oh, sorry. I'm not actually going in for the show. I'm just okay. pointing the direction. <laughs> not allowed in. Never mind. So we just finished the show and we're on our way to, um, to a fitting. That means the designer wants to check that I fit into his clothes. So I'll just try them on. He'll say yes or no. And I'll hope that he'll say yes and that we'll carry on, and I'll be in the show tomorrow. Go and visit him, and um, he will put you in the kind of clothes that he's marked out for you, and um, maybe two or three, four, five, however many outfits. You try them on. If, if he likes it, he polaroids it. If he doesn't, he tries to, you know, finds another one for you. Um, and then, he, you know, you pretty much know what you're going to be wearing in the show. I have very big boobs, um, and very few models. I mean, there are no models with boobs, so because it's just something that, I don't know, very skinny people don't usually have. And 
you know, I do. I have got huge ones in there. You know, they get in the way. You know, a lot of designers can't really design for big boobs, so, you know, I don't always get, like, in the summer, you know, the summer seasons, I don't get nearly as many shows because I know, and I expect it, and I know it, and I've always have. Here's the running order. This is how it works. The polaroids that we took at the fitting, you know, when I was trying on all the outfits, what they do is they then put them in a running order so that everybody knows, so that kind of Paul will know when who is going out. And then just over here is the bar. And then here's backstage where everybody gets dressed. Um, we each have a rail. This is my peg. Here's my dresser. And Paul's very relaxed. Everybody seems very calm here. Easy. I think that feeling of empowerment goes with the, the empowerment feeling that you get. It's definitely something to do with wanting to stand out and knowing that you're, you are actually only one of 30 and actually people aren't there to see you, they're there to see the clothes, which I tend to forget. <laughs> I'm with Select in London, and um, they're a great agency, you know, they're really fun, and you go in there and they're very up, it's very like, they're all joking all the time, and they're really sweet, really nice people, and that's, that makes a big difference, you have to really like your agent, otherwise there's no point, it doesn't, it's a relationship that is really important. My nostrils look really good. It's a bad back that day. Such a bad movie. My my booker at Select is is, um, is Richard. So tomorrow. Yeah. Shows at six and eight thirty, and shall I write the money's down? Monty, is there any money? Monty. You know, he knows what kind of work I want to do. He knows what kind of work I won't do. He knows what, um, which photographers I like working with and which magazines I really just find disgusting. When it's a job that he thinks I might do, then he'll ring me up and see what I think. That's a nice day's work. It's really financially rewarding. And I'm sorry to smile because. It's actually the only, the first the only question that my friends ever ask me is how much are you making because it is amazing you know the industry generates a huge amount of money it's like the eighth largest industry in the world I think a lot of people could argue that models get paid much too much I'm not going to argue that because obviously I'm not, you know it's it's a good time for me that models do a lot but um, and also a lot of other people especially people who work in the industry say that they that you know that they deserve it they work for it so Miss Crazy your sources yeah. We'll be back in a second. It's amazing how your rate changes. You you work with one person, and then suddenly you're worth, you know, from having been worth two hundred pounds a day, you're worth maybe five thousand pounds a day, and then you work with another person, and that makes you pushes you into the fifteen thousand pound a day category. So it's all about luck. It's all about a strategic because it is about. I mean, it's about working with a photographer who pushes you up and out, and pushes yourself out and up through yourself, sort of thing, and through the pages of magazines. Hi. It's an honor. And so the three of you just like in the back of a taxi, and then he's going to do that one, the three of you getting out of a taxi, and the three of you possibly through the back window of a taxi, to sort of heads. And it's front cover of the Times tomorrow. It's too hot in there, man. We're just doing a quick shoot for maybe a cover of a newspaper tomorrow. Um, we're all getting into the back of a cab with two other girls. And I don't know, it's like a London Fashion Week thing. 
Okay, this is what we have to do during our attachment. This is Anna, Andre, Hi, you, you. Hi. Okay, not too cheap. I know, I know, I will talk about it. Can you, can, you, can you sit in the middle? Now, because it's about 20 different venues, you guys are going like headless chickens everywhere, you know? And so they thought, oh, why don't we get three models together in a cab? Mm, that's, so, yeah. That isn't cheesy, is it? What? That isn't cheesy, right? No. Okay, cool. Oh, cool, sorry. Go on. Okay, let's fix it. If, if, look I don't think me, I'm doing it right. You're looking at, at the camera with a nice smile in it, yeah? Let's do that a couple more. Oh, that was good. Okay, cool. Let's we'll just finish one more and we're done with that one. All right, we're just doing the final shot of the time saying thank God. It's not cheesy, but it's like funny. I'm not doing that. Anna, can you just give me a wave then? Like, like just a okay, wave. I'll smile for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've never done one like that. I, I really, I think the idea is really quite strange. It's just, you know, if they do use the picture, it's, I don't want to be seen like, making a silly face from the back of a taxi because it's not really... You know, there's an image that's sort of supposed to surround a model, and I feel very strongly, you know, that maybe making a jerky face makes <laughs> I nearly look like a jerk. <laughs> Fashion, you know, is about image. Image changes. What I'm really saying is that people don't last very long in fashion, which unless you're Yves Saint Laurent or you're a name like that, you know, you can be you can be easily dropped by it. But that's not because the people are dropping you, that's because the situation, the fashion, the business is a you know, is a wheel, it's got to move, it's got to change. So maybe superficial because of that, because you can't you can never be sure of yourself. People are always looking at their shoulder worried that that might be it for them. But that's the nature of it, so that's how that's how it does operate. Show's over. One more thing I have to do. Go to the party. No, it'll be fun. You know, it's nearly the end of fashion week, so I can go out tonight. A lot of champagne, hopefully. Maybe a little bit of food, probably not very much, but I'm so hungry because I haven't eaten anything. Um, and the party. It's in the Voodoo Lounge. Well, it's really hard to sleep, even if it's you know, midnight, which in some shows end at midnight. So then there's a, a big, you know, after show party because everybody's throwing parties. It's a big party time. It's fun. And it's a really fun time of year, but it's really hard to be to do both. It's impossible. So we're here at the Flame Bar. We're, we're kind of waiting for the rest of the Matthew uh, Williams and Kirk fans, the kind of heroes, the tagalongs, you know, those people who weren't maybe loving in the show. You know, the good thing about being the first person here is that you get the pink champagne. So this is what it's like, you know, after a show. This is how it is. It's definitely not enough, but I'm just enjoying the idea of having a glass after a fashion show. People, you know, can go over the top, and it's really important not to go over the top with fashion in every aspect, not just the drugs, not just the, but the night, you know, staying out late, too many shows, too much this, too much that, too many hairstyles. That's the point. It all should be taken lightly. There are drugs around. You know, and if you're not just, if you just don't know about it, if you're just not aware, you know, it's very easy to f 
find it normal. And that's the problem, and that's the danger. And, um, you know, I know a girl who, a friend of mine who kind of had a tough time with it, and she just, it just, that's what, she, you know, she was very young, she came in very young, and, and she said that they were just always around. Recently, you know, there, there have been a lot of really young girls working, and I think a lot of people, especially in the industry, find it a little bit difficult. You know, they find it a little bit awful. Um, I find it awful because I, you know, I started when I was 19 and I was really scared and nervous and afraid. Having said that, I've met 13 year old girls who are more sophisticated than me at 20, you know, 22 or whatever. So it really depends on the person, but I, I would never let my daughter do it. You know, I even think that me at 19 is pretty young for it. Because it is a job that can really affect a young mind. It can be really destructive. From a designer's point of view, he's trying to sell his clothes. And he's trying to sell them to a very wide audience through photographs, through media. And things that look best are, you know, very thin bodies. big industry necessity um, for girls to be small, for girls to be thin and, and you know a lot of girls are naturally very thin and, and just you know will always be like that but a lot of girls aren't and I'm not like that I have to work at it. If, you're, if you can if you can like level-headed about it then you know if you can approach it sensibly then it's fine but obviously a lot of people find it really tough and I think that that's something that goes with fashion too is that the fashion industry is that you know, some models are in trouble and get ill that's really difficult but that's how it is I'm afraid that's how the industry is and there's nothing you can do about that really so um, we just finished the shows and I've got a couple of minutes to um, go and do some shopping for some food because you might not believe it but we do actually eat during fashion week um, the important thing is to eat healthy or that's that's how I look at it you know, I like to have organic stuff, and so I've gone to my local organic shop. So fruit is the, um, the main thing, the number one thing. It's easy, to it's easy to buy, easy to carry around, easy to eat. We can eat quite a lot of it. You know, the, it's a bit of sugar, just to give you a kind of natural, you know, natural kick. But it's all very natural, it's all very digestible. And what I like to do is um, drink hot water with lemon. It's really cleansing, it's really good for the skin, it's good for the digestion. Ginger's really good. It's good as an antiseptic, as a like, um, you know, to fight uh, fight off colds. As is garlic. It's really good. The fashion flu that we all get. Rice cakes, very popular backstage. Very popular with all the models. No fat. Um, my, a big favourite of mine. I I just snack on them. You know, there's basically nothing to them. When it's fashion week, you know, I you know I'm not going to be eating, you know, chocolate or whatever. But it's it's something that you get used to being aware of. We do look really different when we're off work. <laughs> Not only are we usually in jeans and t-shirts or whatever. But we're very rarely made up and when for fashion, for a fashion shoot or a fashion show, you are invariably made up into, you know, someone different or something, you know, an image that's different to your own and people often don't know, don't really recognise the real person, which it's great, it's fine. I think particularly now where you don't have the kind of giant supermodel or the kind of industrial supermodel, um, which you did have with you know, Kate Moss and Naomi Campbell and, um, and Cindy Crawford and that sort of thing. I think now it's much more about your own, you know, a character that, that is recognised by the fashion world but maybe, maybe not far, too far beyond. I just got a call from my agent who said that the, um, the Times thing that we shot yesterday in the taxi cab has come out, so I'm going to go and look at it. I hope it's not too bad. Um, the Times, please. Through the taxi cab. Through the back of the taxi. Well, it's okay, it's not too bad. I was, I have to say, I was expecting something really quite cheesy, maybe a little bit cringy. This isn't too bad. Nothing can really go wrong except falling over, but that's not 
I mean, I fell over last season in Vivian Westwood's show. And apart from poor Vivian Westwood's insurance bill, I think being hiked up, I think that, you know, it's not, even that doesn't matter because it's even, even that is a game. So they've just told me, okay, I fell down the stairs at Vivian Westwood last time. And they've just all told, told me that they, I mustn't drink at this show. And they're banning me from the bar because they think I'm going to fall over. Apparently their insurance premium has gone up. The photographers we walked down in front of, actually it was quite contentious about it. Um, um, I think it was either last season or the season before. There were a few articles written about um, in magazines and papers about how aggressive those photographers are at the end of the stage and you know, how maybe they, they, how nasty they are to the models as they walk out, especially if they're not wearing much and they're kind of you know, wolf or something like that. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Actually, I really like it because it stirs up. Stirs me up, and you know I think I'm much more powerful than them. I'm, I'm the one who's walking down the catwalk. Like what I'm interested in is why is that so many people are interested in fashion. There are a lot of people who really want to know, and if there are a lot of people who want to know, that means if there's someone there to tell them, then you know, that's good. Okay, sorry, because I really don't want to send you. Okay, don't worry, it's fine. This guy have asked me to do a talk over during the Alexander McQueen show, um, so I, I went to watch it, and so. I'm going to be t talking to the lady, the other broadcasting lady at Sky, about what I think of the show, you know, about the clothes, um, about the other models, how they do it. Yeah, well, watching an Alexander show particularly is particularly strange because they're my favourite shows to do. So, you know, it's a shame not doing them, but I understand that sometimes I might not be what, you know, the season's collections. I think the fashion world should be, should be something that people, you know, is more accessible because even though, you know, to someone outside of it, it must seem a very long way away. So great, you know, I, I love it when people are interested. About two years ago, um, the uh, editor of The Spectator magazine came to watch a fashion show and he came backstage and I really didn't know who he was and he introduced himself and I was like, oh, hi. And he said, do you want to write the diary for the, Sco for the Spectrum? From that came a few other kind of small things where people asked me to write a little bit about what, you know, what the fashion week or whatever. And, that kind of built up and then I got this offer from the Spectrum uh, magazine which is the Sunday magazine that comes with the Scotsman and it was to do a weekly column for them, a regular thing of, you know, to, to do wherever I was whenever I was travelling, you know, um, because my family's Scottish that was the kind of link to, to the magazine and um, it's an amazing discipline, it's an amazing thing to have to do often on Mondays I'm in a total panic because I've got to work and then I've got, you know, eight hours of night and then I've got to get it in the next morning and I've got to be working the next morning too so it often means you know staying up late into the night but it's good it's really good to write about it's a really good you know memory first of all also it's once again it's spreading a little bit the, the interesting lives that we lead the cool thing for me about modeling is that um, I've slightly found um, different things to do with it if you kind of focus on what you're, what else you think you're interested in, then you can slightly combine them and, you know, maybe I wouldn't be having that column if I wasn't modelling, but models have written books, Naomi has written her book and, and models have gone into music. But there's a lot to do people, because people are interested in the product you made yourself into. And um, so I don't know what it's going to be for me, but I'm really determined to look. In the moment, journalism is really, you know, it's, it goes well, they go well together. I think hamburgers are more lucrative, but I don't think anyone would want an honour phrase of hamburgers. London Fashion Week, sponsored by Max Factor.